Hey, a big welcome today to Passion City Church. What an honor to be with you. My name is Craig Rochelle, and uh, I am broadcasting from my home church with five amazing people in the audience, appropriately social distancing, and uh, we send our love, Pastor Louie and Shelly. You are the best of the best of the best. Uh, you are heroes of the faith. Uh, we applaud your ministry. Those of you that call Passion City your home, if I were you, I would thank God every single day that I get to be under such amazing leadership. And so wherever you're watching from, from the Atlanta locations, I know that many of you aren't able to gather in most places, but you can tell us where you're watching from in the chat right now online. Just tell us a little shout out from whatever part of the community uh, you're from. And those of you in DC, man, I applaud your leader, Pastor Ben Stewart, one of the best of the best of the best. And it's such an honor to be with you. If I can just say, Pastor Louie and Shelly, your impact in my life personally is amazing. Amy and I love you as dear friends. Um, and your influence on our children is unparalleled. Those who are with us today are big fans of your ministry. And I just wanna say congratulations to you on the new location um, in Cumberland and everyone who calls Passion City your home, I hope that you'll understand that God is doing more than you can even fathom. God is doing so much more than you can see, both through the local communities of Passion City around the world. Uh, your ministry has impacted me, therefore impacting other people. Your ministry is touching more people than you could ever imagine. Uh, it's a great honor today. I wanna bring God's word. So if you wouldn't mind joining me for a moment in prayer. Father, thank you so much for um, amazing spiritual leaders shepherding the great people of Passion City Church. God, we pray for increased favor to reach even more people, to launch even more locations. God, we pray that you would increase the influence of the, these godly light bearers, that they would be ambassadors showing and sharing the love of Jesus in all that they do. God, bless us and speak to us from your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Go ahead and type it in the chat and say amen and amen. Could I be transparent? I'll make a little confession to you. I love Jesus. I follow Jesus. I worship Jesus. And yet I still battle with anxiety. I love Jesus. I truly do. I honor him, but I still battle with overwhelming feelings of anxiety. Some of you may be able to relate, and I'll tell you just a little bit of my story. Um, just like your pastor, I lead a church that in March was unable to meet physically, which is quite disorienting for a pastor. I know that many of you face your own challenges that are very similar. Um, and I was looking to get a little time off in March and that didn't happen. And then right when things looked like they might go back to normal, um, we had kind of the um, increased awareness of the ongoing racial tensions and injustices, which um, is a complicated time to lead through and lead through well. And I found myself with this just overwhelming sense of heaviness. What do I do? How do I lead the church? Um, how do I represent the injustices well and speak truth in a way that brings life and healing when I feel so inadequate and unprepared? And so what's happened, quite honestly, is um, many times in the middle of the evening, I would wake up just at two o'clock in the morning and I'd try to pray, but I'd find myself with just an overwhelming shortness of breath. Like literally, it's hard for me just to even catch my breath and I couldn't go back to sleep, and I would break out into sweats, and this, this, this un very unusual, very, very real anxiety. So to be clear, I know Jesus. I love Jesus. I'm following Jesus, and yet I still battle with anxiety. Some of you might be able to relate um, many of you, maybe for years and years, some of you, um, just, just this year, it's kind of new for you because let's be honest, 2020 is the longest year in history, right? In fact, I just know one day that 2020 is gonna be an adjective. People would be like, don't go 2020 on me. 
you know, or you're acting so 2020 right now. I mean, this is the craziest time. And it's no wonder, I mean, you introduce this mysterious virus um, that spreads like wildfire. You shut down the world. You, you disrupt every normal routine that you have. You add to it massive economic fears and racial tensions and political um, division. And you've got what some would say would be biased news and a bunch of freaked out people. I don't know if there's anybody at your church doing this, but at my church, there's all these freak out people sharing their conspiracy theories on social media. And all of a sudden you wake up, it's no wonder so many people feel afraid. So many people feel lonely. So many feel uncertain. So many of us are battling with this loss of control. We feel helpless, some feel hopeless. And many people today, maybe even you, you feel overwhelming sense of anxiety. Here's what's interesting. Um, According to the National Center for Health, um, some researchers compared the anxiety level of people in July of last year as opposed to July of this year. Let me share with you what they found. In July of 2019, barely a year ago, 8.2% of adults showed signs of anxiety disorder, 8.2%. One year later, from 2019 to 2020, now, 36% wow, of adults showed signs of anxiety disorder. It's no wonder the world is so different and so many of us don't know how to cope. What I wanna do today is I wanna bring Passion City a word of hope, a word of comfort, and a word that I pray builds your faith, and I wanna talk to you about anxiety. Now, let's acknowledge for a minute that anxiety is a very, very complicated subject and I'm not trying to be um, an expert. In fact, we need to acknowledge that anxiety can be physiological, it can be emotional, it could be situational, it can be spiritual. And so if you are battling with severe anxiety, you'd be wise to see experts, to see a doctor who might help you with your diet or supplements or maybe prescription medicine. You'd be wise to get counseling. And I'm not trying to pretend like um, I'm prepared to speak on those levels, but as a pastor, what I wanna do is I wanna speak on a spiritual level to how do we deal with anxiety. So from a spiritual level, if you're a Christian, some people might say, well, if I'm a Christian um, and I feel anxious, have I failed God? In other words, is it a sin to feel anxious? And I wanna be very, very clear and help you understand, it's not a sin to feel anxious. Anxiety is a little bit like anger. Um, It's not a sin to feel angry. Paul said, in your anger, do not sin. Anger can lead to sin. Anxiety can lead to sinful behavior, but feeling anxious in of itself is not necessarily a sin. In fact, it might surprise you and maybe even comfort some of you in the same way it comforted me to see that Jesus perhaps even battled with anxiety. I'm gonna show it to you. How Jesus responds to overwhelming anxiety could give us a clue how we can respond spiritually. What did Jesus do when he felt overwhelmed? How did Jesus respond when he had so much anxiety that he said, my soul is overwhelmed even to the point of death? I'll show you what Jesus did. Jesus started talking. When anxiety rose up, Jesus talked back And I wanna show you three ways you can talk yourself through anxiety like Jesus did. How do you find relief in anxiety? The first thing we learn from Jesus is this. We learn number one, it's often wise to talk to your friends. Talk to people that you love and love you, talk to your friends. In fact, to give you context of Mark's gospel, we're gonna be in Mark 14. Um, This was after the Last Supper. Jesus was with his small group. He was with his disciples. And um, one of his closest friends, Judas, slips out the side to go and betray Jesus. And Jesus takes his disciples to the garden. He takes three of his closest friends to pray with them. And we read in Mark 14, verse 32, that they went to a place called Gethsemane. Gethsemane means the crushing. They went to this place. And Jesus said to his disciples, he said to his friends, hey, you guys sit here while I pray. And he took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. You might feel a similar way. 
deeply distressed, an overwhelming sense of heaviness. What's gonna happen? What, what, am I gonna be able to keep my job? What if, what if someone I love gets sick? What if I get sick? This overwhelming sense of, of, of trouble. In fact, I like the way the message translates this verse. The message says of Jesus, he plunged into a sinkhole of dreadful agony. Why would Jesus plunge into a sinkhole of dreadful agony? Well, Jesus, as the son of God, he knew what was coming. He knew that he would be arrested. He knew he would be tortured. He knew that he would die the most brutal death of crucifixion. We get our word excruciating from crucifixion. It means ex, out of, out of the cross, the most painful way to die. Even worse, Jesus, if you remember, he never ever sinned and he would become sin. Think about it. Hatred and shame, anger, rape, lying, corruption, greed, whatever, whatever sin you can imagine. Jesus becomes that on the cross. And when he does, his father, in whom he've always had contact, intimate fellowship, his father turns away because God can't look upon sin. And Jesus cries out perhaps the most painful thing, my God, my God, where are you? Why have you forsaken me? Jesus sinks into this sinkhole of dreadful agony. And I want you to watch his honesty with his friends. See, I don't know if you've ever noticed it or not, but sometimes Christians lie the most. You ever notice that? Like when you're like Christian to Christian, like, how you doing? I'm fine, praise the Lord, brother, hallelujah, I'm doing great. Oh, thank you, Jesus, I'm doing fine. Jesus doesn't do any of that, okay? When his friends are, are looking at him, he is incredibly honest to them, and here's what he says to his friends. He talks to his friends and he says, hey guys, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. In other words, th this weight that I'm feeling is so heavy, it, it may kill me. That's how honest Jesus was. My soul, my, my inside is so heavy. I don't even know if I can survive this weight, this agony, this anxiety that I'm feeling. And so he tells his friends, essentially, here's what I'm going through and I really, really need you. Um, I'm convinced that perhaps for some of you, one of the biggest reasons right now that you're feeling anxious is because you're lacking community. You're lacking the intimacy of the body of Christ to surround you, to comfort you, to hold you, to lift you, to point you toward Jesus, to, to, to be strength for you when you feel so weak. In fact, I'm absolutely convinced that it's gonna take years of study, years from now, to see just how much this season of isolation and quarantines and distancing, how many different ways this impacts us relationally impacts us spiritually, impacts our soul by being distant from the support system that we so need. Jesus says, I need you to pray. I need you to pray. In fact, I like this. It's kind of like the difference between just praying for and praying with. Like, if you pray for me and I pray for you, like, hey, I'm praying for you, Passion City, that's really good. But if we get together and I don't just pray for you from a distance, but if we pray with each other, there's something powerful about locking hands, about calling on heaven together, about binding together and loosing together and calling on the name of Jesus together. He says, guys, I need you. He talks to his friends and says, my soul is overwhelmed to the point of death. Will you pray for me? What did Jesus do? when he felt overwhelmed? What did he do whenever he felt anxious? Well, the first thing he did is he talked to his friends. In fact, one of the very most common things I hear, I know so many churches are unable to meet. Many of my friends or churches can't meet. The moment someone goes back into a physical location and thank God for online, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. But when they come back to a physical relation, so often what do they do? They, do, they just cry and cry and cry and say, I had no idea how much I missed experiencing God with my brothers and sisters in Christ. 
Oh, whenever Passion City is able to open up in all the places again, and you know you can go in safely, I know you'll be overwhelmed with the presence and the love of God through his people. There's something about not just praying for, not just worshiping from a distance, but praying and worshiping with. What do you do when you have that heaviness? Well, first of all, you talk to your friends. The second thing we learn from Jesus is you talk to your father. You talk to your heavenly father. Let's unpack this a little bit. Um, I don't know about you, but one thing that gives me anxiety is a little red light that comes on the dash of my car. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know, it can be the little exclamation point. It can be the check engine light, whatever it is. Think about that red light. If you see the red light, we have to acknowledge the light is not the problem. What is the red light? It's a signal to take the car to the manufacturer. What is anxiety? Anxiety is a signal alerting you that it's time to pray. In fact, it was the apostle Paul who said this. He said, don't get anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, don't get anxious about a thing, but in everything, with prayer and petition, present your request to God, and when you pray about it, and when you give it to God, the peace of God, which goes beyond your human ability to understand, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In other words, Passion City, if it's big enough to worry about, it's big enough to pray about. When you feel anxiety, talk to your father. If you're worried about your marriage, pray about your marriage. If you're worried about the election, pray about it. The economy, pray about it. The, your job, pray about it. A decision you need to make. What do we do? Are we gonna homeschool? Are we gonna send them back? How are we gonna do this? School coming up and all the complications. Oh my gosh, it's so crazy. Pray about it. If you're worried about your loved one getting sick, pray about it. If you're worried about getting sick and getting that swab shoved up your nose where it tickles the back of your brain, ah, oh, <laughs> pray about it. If it's on your mind, it's on God's heart. If it's big enough to worry about, it's big enough to pray about. What is anxiety? It's a signal alerting you. You need the presence of your father. You talk to your friends and you talk to your father. Watch Jesus do this. He's overwhelmed. His soul is aching. He knows what's coming. And scripture says, going a little farther, he fell to the ground. And what did he do? He prayed. He talked to his heavenly father and he said, if it's possible that this hour might pass from him, God, I know, I pray, God, remove this cup of suffering. He said, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. What I like about this prayer is it was just honest. It wasn't like a memorized prayer. Sometimes I think one of the worst things we can do for our kids is like just teach them to pray memorized prayers. Like now I lay me down to sleep. If I should die before I wake, I just pray the Lord my soul to take. Anybody pray that prayer? What parent thought that was a good thing to teach a four-year-old? If I should die <laughs> before I wake, all I know is I could die tonight and somebody could take my soul, okay? That's just like crazy. Jesus is like this, this very honest gut level prayer. I don't really wanna go through this, God. If there's any other way, let's do it another way. Here's what I hope you'll understand about God is that he loves you and he understands your pain. Peter said this, Peter said, to cast your cares upon God, unleash them, whatever's on your heart, just tell them to God. I am completely convinced that God would rather you shout at him, question him, yell at him, than to walk away or just fake it. God is big enough to handle your honest, heartfelt prayers. Jesus just cries out to God. I, 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 I'm in agony, I'm falling apart. Is there any other way? You can do that same thing, whatever's on, whatever's on your heart. I'm scared, God, I'm afraid, I'm angry at you, God. Why'd you let this happen? God is big enough to handle the honest cries of your heart. If it's on your mind, it's on God's heart. What do you do when you're overwhelmed with anxiety? Well, we can do what Jesus did. He talked to his friends, I need you, pray for me. Don't, don't leave me, you're so important to me. He talked to his father. 
God, I'm begging you, can we do it any other way? The third thing that you can do when you feel anxious is you can talk to your feelings. You can talk directly to your feelings. Question, Passion City, be honest. Any of you have like jacked up, whacked out, crazy feelings ever? Okay, my gosh, I do. Sometimes people say like, follow your feelings, follow your heart, follow your feelings. Don't do that, don't do that. Okay, if I followed my feelings, I'd be in jail by noon tomorrow. Don't, don't just follow your feelings. You can feel your feelings. Your feelings are real, but your feelings are not always true. In other words, I have to tell myself that I am not necessarily what I'm feeling. My feelings aren't necessarily true. So you can talk to your feelings. You, you don't need to let your feelings control you. What, what, what do you say to your feelings? You can say, feelings, you're not the boss of me. <laughs> You don't, you don't get to tell me what to do because feelings don't always reflect reality. I don't know how many times I felt so overwhelmed, so afraid of something I just knew was gonna happen and it didn't happen at all. So we're gonna talk <clears throat> to our feelings. We're gonna talk to them. This is what Jesus did. Watch what he did. He says in, in verse 36, he says, Abba, Father, everything, God, everything is possible for you. God, here's what I want you to do. Take this cup from me. And you can almost see Jesus talking to his own feelings. I don't wanna, I don't, I don't wanna suffer, yet, not what I will, but what you will. Not my will, God, but your will be done. Feelings, it's not what you want, because I know you don't wanna suffer, but feelings, we're gonna do what our Father wants. What did Jesus feel like? Here's what I promise you. He didn't feel like going to the cross. I'm so glad Jesus didn't do what he felt like doing. He said, not my will, but what my Father wants. What we can do is we can speak to our feelings, and I have to do this all the time. Um, I may not feel like preaching. I may not feel like being loving. I may not feel like doing what's right. But what I wanna do is I wanna speak to my feelings and I wanna align my feelings with God's truth. So if you start to feel like, well, God doesn't love me, you say, no, 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 that, that's a feeling, that's not truth. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God loves me. God, love's not just what God does, but love is who God is. No, God loves me, this is the truth. If you feel like you're alone, I'm always gonna be alone, I'm always gonna, I'm always gonna be alone. No, 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 you say, no, my God will never leave me. He will never, ever forsake me. If you feel worried about money, finances, you say, no, no, the truth is, my God, <laughs> he will provide all my needs according to his riches and glory that are in Christ Jesus. When, when you start to feel like a victim, everybody's down to get me, I can't trust anybody, I, I'm never gonna get ahead in life, everything's going, no, 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 no. I. Scripture says, and an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and by the words of his testimony. There's somebody here, you need to talk to your feelings. You're not the boss of me. Here's what scripture says. I am who God says I am. I'm not what others think. I'm not what somebody did. I'm not what I feel in this moment. You just talk to your feelings. I am exactly who God says I am. Feelings, you align with God's truth. Even if I don't feel it, I'm gonna to choose to believe what God says is true about me. What did Jesus do when he had anxiety? He talked to his friends. He talked to his father. He talked to his feelings. In Passion City, here's what I want you to notice. It worked, meaning it made a difference when he called out on his friends, Jesus, the son of God, needed people. When he called out to his father and when he talked to his feelings and aligned them with God's truth, it worked. Think about it. Jesus stumbled into the garden, overwhelmed with soul crushing anxiety. The soldiers came to arrest him. 
He faced unjust trials and unspeakable torture, excruciating pain, shame, and death on the cross. Was Jesus anxious then? No. He was resolute, strong, determined, unshakable. He was the one who said, no man takes my life. I lay it down. And he went to the cross. And whenever the creation, whenever the people mocked him, hurled insults at him, beat him mercilessly, spit on him, what did Jesus do? He didn't break, he didn't break down. He looked up to heaven and he said, Father, please forgive them. They don't even know what they're doing. And then he said, Dad, I did what you sent me to do. It's finished. Into your hands, I commit my spirit. When God in the flesh, a body just like yours and just like mine, felt anxious about what was coming, he talked to his friends, he talked to his father, and he talked to his feelings. And this is what I've been doing, like this is what I've been doing. I've been talking to, uh, to very dear friends, uh, my wife, um, some close friends, some people in, in my small group, a couple of pastor friends, and I've been talking through just very honestly, yeah, I'm dealing with some real anxiety. And I've been talking to my heavenly father, God, I really need you. I've had some really, really honest prayers from the, the depths of my heart. And I've been talking a lot to my feelings because honestly, a lot of times my feelings um, are really, really different than God's truth. And what I would say is it's a process that's working, meaning I'm not completely out of the anxiety, but I know where to go when the little signal goes out. This is a signal alerting me. It's time to depend on the people in my life. It's time to call out on the one who created my life. And it's time to align my feelings with the author of life. It's a signal alerting me. Yeah, you may need to go see a doctor, you may need to do a lot, but spiritually speaking, we need God's people, we need his presence, and we need his truth. The Apostle Paul said this, Philippians 4, verse six and seven. This is amazing. Don't miss this, Passion City. Paul said, do not be anxious about anything. Would that include the election? Probably so. Don't be anxious about the election. He could have said, don't be anxious about your future. Don't be anxious about your children. Don't be anxious about a sickness. Don't be anxious about marriage trials, whatever. But in every situation, whatever is weighing on you in this moment, in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, you present your requests to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I love this. It's the peace of God. <laughs> it's the peace of God. It is the peace of God. It's not your peace and it's not of this world. In other words, the world can't give it and the world can't take it away. What do you know? Your God is good. Your God is doing more than you can see. What you're going through may be preparation for you to help someone else to get through their storm because there's no storm that our God won't bring you through. There's no obstacle our God won't help you overcome. There's no enemy that God won't defeat. And there is no heartache that God won't heal. So I'll tell you again, I love Jesus. I know Jesus and I faithfully try to serve Jesus. And yet I still battle with a little bit of anxiety. If that's you, Jesus shows us exactly what to do. You need the people of Passion City. You need the family of faith. Talk to them, cry out to your father. He can handle the honest cries of your heart. And anytime your feelings <clears throat> don't align with truth, Align your feelings and say, even though I feel this, this is what's true. And when you call out on God, and we're gonna do that today, there is a peace from heaven that will guard your hearts 
and your souls in Christ Jesus. So Father, we ask for the amazing, faithful people of Passion City, for those, God, that are hurting, those who feel anxious. God, I know I'm not qualified to speak into all the conditions, but spiritually, God, we know what we can do. When that little signal is going off, it's alerting us. We need you, God. We need your people. And we need your truth. So Holy Spirit, I pray today that you would do a work on heavy hearts as we cast our cares on you. And you can just, you, if you've got a care, you might even wanna just, if it's appropriate, type it in the chat. I'm trusting you with my child, or my teenager. I'm trusting you with my future. I'm trusting you, God, with my job. I'm trusting you, God, um, with, 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 with this, I'm, I'm trusting you, God, and cast your cares upon God. And as we do, God, May your peace that goes beyond our ability to understand right now, in this moment, right now, guard our hearts and our souls. As you keep praying today, there's some of you might, you might think, oh my gosh, I'm far from God. I've done too much. I've, I've been too bad. Let me tell you about the goodness of God. Right now, I want you to align your feelings with that which is true. The truth is that God loves you, that God sent his son, Jesus, who is Jesus? He is the sinless Son of God who became sin on the cross and died in your place so that anyone, and this includes you, doesn't matter what you've done, doesn't matter how dark your life feels right now, doesn't matter how anxious you are, sometimes God may even allow us to get to a low place. So all we can do is look up and call on Him. And you recognize, I need Jesus. I want His presence. I need His forgiveness. I need His grace. When you call on the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus, God hears your prayers. He will forgive your sin. You may have tuned in and are watching for this moment. You need the grace of Jesus. What do you do? Just turn from your sins, turn toward him. And when you do, God will hear the cries of your heart. He will forgive every sin and you'll become brand new. Those today, you may just type it in the chat. I'm giving my life to Jesus. And, and as you are, wherever you are, I would just encourage you to pray this prayer with me from your heart. Just pray, Heavenly Father, Please forgive my sins. Jesus, change me and make me new. Fill me with your spirit so I could follow you, serve you, and show your love. My life is not my own. I give it all to you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. I would encourage you today, if you're praying that prayer, man, plug in, come back to Passion City Church online. When the church opens up in your community, you go there and get plugged in. And if you committed your life to Jesus today, would you just text the number on the screen? That way one of our amazing uh, Passion City leaders can reach out and care for you. Pastor Louie, Pastor Shelley, Amy, I love you. We're honored to be with you. Thank God every day you get to be a part of Passion City Church where Jesus is doing more than you can ever even imagine.